Hello everyone and welcome back to How the Web Works. In this lecture we're actually going to be discussing the following ideas. We'll talk about how the web works, what is actually happening when you input a URL into your browser, and how it connects and retrieves a website. Then we'll also talk about what we mean when we say full stack and full stack web development. We'll get a brief overview of the course technologies that we teach here, and also why we chose Django for the course. Let's get started. So before we can begin to learn about all the technologies in this course, we need to understand how the web works and what actually constitutes the full stack. So what actually happens when you're at home and you open up your browser and visit a website? Let's break down the basic steps. You start off by typing your URL into your browser. So you're at home, you open up your browser and you type in whatever website you want, facebook.com, google.com, etc. Then your computer sends this request as a packet, which includes the IP address of the website you want. And the IP address allows servers later on to actually identify what website you're looking for. And it sends this request through wires or a satellite which eventually links to wires using your internet service provider. So if you're at home, your request is eventually sent through either copper wires or optic fiber wires to the server that we're about to reach. Or if you're on your cell phone, it links to a satellite which links back down to Earth, which then ends up going to some sort of physical wire. And at a very, very basic level, the internet is basically just wires connecting computers with some sort of protocol. So your ISP will then reroute the request to the appropriate server location, using the IP address as the guide. And then once your request reaches the server, it can send back the website you were asking for. However, a full website with content is too big to send back as a single packet of data. And the way we solve this is the server sends back the website split up into many, many packets. And the packets come with instructions on how to get back to you and reassemble themselves once they reach you. And the packets don't actually care how they get to you, just the final location. So all these packets may take different paths to actually get to your computer or back to your cell phone or whatever browser you're using. What they really care about is the fastest way to get back to your destination at your home IP address. And then once the packets reach you, they're reassembled to show whatever page you were looking for. All of this moves at close to the speed of light, so it happens very fast. Okay, that was a really high level explanation, but for our purposes, it's really all we need to know for now. Let's continue on by discussing what we mean by the term full stack. There are two main components of a website. There's the front end of a website and the back end of a website. The front end of a website is what you see as a user on the website. And then the back end is the technology used to actually decide what to show you on the front end. For instance, let's say you're looking at facebook.com. So what you see, the colors, the actual content there, that's all the front end stuff. The back end is what decides if you're a user coming in, what pictures or content or comments to retrieve from the database and then show it to you on the front end. So let's talk a little bit more about that front end. The front end really revolves around three key technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You will hear about front end technologies such as jQuery and Bootstrap, which we also cover in this course, but those are actually all things built using those previous three, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Those are really the three core front end technologies that basically every modern website uses today. HTML is hypertext markup language, and every website will have HTML. It's the structure of the page, and you can actually view it by right-clicking on selecting View Page Source, if you're using the Chrome browser, on any website. So you can open up your browser on this page, right-click, select View Page Source, and you will actually see the HTML for whatever website you're looking at. Then there's CSS, which is cascading style sheets. And CSS is the actual styling of the website. Colors, fonts, borders, etc. It's all defined by CSS. And CSS is not mandatory, but almost all sites have it in order to make the website look good. And then finally, JavaScript allows you to add interactivity to the website, including programming logic. Any site with interactivity uses JavaScript in some way. Otherwise, if the site doesn't actually do anything, it just displays information, the site is known as a static website. Okay, so the first half of this course is going to focus on the front end. And the front end, in some way, is always going to use those three technologies. However, it's the back end where a multitude of options come up. So the back end of a site has three components. The language you choose for the back end, the framework you choose for that language, and then the database you want to connect to. 
technologies such as PHP, Node.js, Ruby and Rails, Java, Python, etc. are all viable options for a website. So how do we actually decide which option to choose? Well, our course backend uses the Python as the language, Django as the framework for Python, and then SQLite as the database. Python is a great language to learn. It's simple, powerful, and already has many libraries for it. So what does that actually mean? Well, it's simple because the actual syntax of programming through Python is based on code readability and clarity, meaning you're gonna save yourself a lot of time programming because of how easy Python is to learn and type with. And then it's powerful and scalable. And it also has many libraries already attached to it. So if you're interested in applications such as machine learning for your website, data visualization for your website, or even things such as gaming for your website, Python already has many libraries you can use to implement those ideas into your project. And Django is the most powerful and popular framework for Python. It's fast, secure, and scalable, and it's used by many actual websites such as Pinterest, Instagram, Bitbucket, they all run on Django. And then SQLite comes with Django and Python, making it a very easy choice to use as our database. And as we continue along with the course, we're going to be discussing each of these topics in much more detail. But for now, you should have a high level view of what we use in this course to turn you into a full stack web developer with Django. Full stack meaning we combine the front end technologies with the back end technologies so you can create a website all the way through from scratch. Okay, now that we have the high level overview, Let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the course.